Stephen Hawking, science's brightest star, dies aged 76 Stephen Hawking, the brightest star in the firmament of science whose insights shaped modern cosmology and inspired global audiences in the millions, has died aged 76. His family released a statement in the early hours of Wednesday morning confirming his death at his home in Cambridge. Hawking's children, Lucy, Robert, and Tim, said in a statement, We are deeply saddened that our beloved father passed away today. He was a great scientist and an extraordinary man whose work and legacy will live on for many years. His courage and persistence with his brilliance and humor inspired people across the world. He once said, It would not be much of a universe if it wasn't home to the people you love. We will miss him forever. For fellow scientists and loved ones, it was Hawking's intuition and wicked sense of humor that marked him out as much as the fierce intellect that, coupled with his illness, came to symbolize the unbounded possibilities of the human mind Hawking was driven to Wagner, but not the bottle, when he was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 1963 at the age of 21. Doctors expected him to live for only two more years. But Hawking had a form of the disease that progressed more slowly than usual. He survived for more than half a century. Hawking once estimated he worked only 1,000 hours during his three undergraduate years at Oxford. In his finals, he came borderline between a first and second class degree. Convinced that he was seen as a difficult student, he told his Viva examiners that if they gave him a first he would move to Cambridge to pursue his PhD. Award a second, and he threatened to stay. They opted for a first. Those who live in the shadow of death are often those who live most. For Hawking, the early diagnosis of his terminal disease and witnessing the death from leukemia of a boy he knew in hospital ignited a fresh sense of purpose. Although there was a cloud hanging over my future, I found, to my surprise, that I was enjoying life in the present more than before. I began to make progress with my research, he once said. Embarking on his career in earnest, he declared, my goal is simple. It is a complete understanding of the universe, why it is as it is, and why it exists at all. He began to use crutches in the 1960s, but long fought the use of a wheelchair. When he finally relented, he became notorious for his wild driving along the streets of Cambridge, not to mention the intentional running over of students' toes and the occasional spin on the dance floor at college parties. Hawking's first major breakthrough came in 1970, when he and Roger Penrose applied the mathematics of black holes to the universe and showed that a singularity, a region of infinite curvature in space-time, lay in our distant past, the point from which came the Big Bang. Penrose found he was able to talk with Hawking even as the latter's speech failed. Hawking, he said, had an absolute determination not to let anything get in his way. He thought he didn't have long to live, and he really wanted to get as much as he could done at that time. In 1974 Hawking drew on quantum theory to declare that black holes should emit heat and eventually pop out of existence. For normal-sized black holes, the process is extremely slow, but miniature black holes would release heat at a spectacular rate, eventually exploding with the energy of a million one-megaton hydrogen bombs. His proposal that black holes radiate heat stirred up one of the most passionate debates in modern cosmology. Hawking argued that, if a black hole could evaporate, all the information that fell inside over its lifetime would be lost forever. It contradicted one of the most basic laws of quantum mechanics, and plenty of physicists disagreed. Hawking came round to believing the more common, if no less baffling, explanation that information is stored at a black hole's event horizon and encoded back into radiation as the black hole radiates. Merica Taylor, a former student of Hawking's and now professor of theoretical physics at Southampton University, remembers how Hawking announced his U-turn on the information paradox to his students. He was discussing their work with them in the pub when Taylor noticed he was turning his speech synthesizer up to the max. I'm coming out, he bellowed. The whole pub turned around and looked at the group before Hawking turned the volume down and clarified the statement, I'm coming out and admitting that maybe information loss doesn't occur. 
he had, Taylor said, a wicked sense of humor. Hawking's run of radical discoveries led to his election in 1974 to the Royal Society at the young age of 32. Five years later, he became the Lucasian Professor of Mathematics of Cambridge, arguably Britain's most distinguished chair, and a post formerly held by Isaac Newton, Charles Babbage and Paul Dirac, one of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics. Hawking's seminal contributions continued through the 1980s. The theory of cosmic inflation holds that the fledgling universe went through a period of terrific expansion. In 1982, Hawking was among the first to show how quantum fluctuations, tiny variations in the distribution of matter, might give rise through inflation to the spread of galaxies in the universe. In these tiny ripples lay the seeds of stars, planets, and life as we know it. But it was a brief history of time that rocketed Hawking to stardom. Published for the first time in 1988, the title made the Guinness Book of Records after it stayed on the Sunday Times bestsellers list for an unprecedented 237 weeks. It sold 10 meters copies and was translated into 40 different languages. Nevertheless, Wags called it the greatest unread book in history. Hawking married his college sweetheart, Jane Wilde, in 1965, two years after his diagnosis. She first set eyes on him in 1962, lolloping down the street in St. Albans, his face down, covered by an unruly mass of brown hair. A friend warned her she was marrying into a mad, mad family. With all the innocence of her 21 years, she trusted that Stephen would cherish her, she wrote in her 2013 book traveling to infinity, my life with Stephen. In 1985, during a trip to CERN, Hawking was taken to hospital with an infection. He was so ill that doctors asked Jane if they should withdraw life support. She refused, and Hawking was flown back to Attenbrooke's hospital in Cambridge for a life-saving tracheotomy. The operation saved his life but destroyed his voice. The couple had three children, but the marriage broke down in 1991. Hawking's progressive condition, his demands on Jane, and his refusal to discuss his illness were destructive forces the relationship could not endure, she said. Jane wrote of him being a child possessed of a massive and fractious ego, and how husband and wife became master and slave. Four years later, Hawking married Elaine Mason one of the nurses employed to give him round-the-clock care. The marriage lasted 11 years, during which Cambridgeshire police investigated a series of alleged assaults on Hawking. The physicist denied that Elaine was involved and refused to cooperate with police, who dropped the investigation. Hawking was not, perhaps, the greatest physicist of his time, but in cosmology he was a towering figure. There is no perfect proxy for scientific worth, but Hawking won the Albert Einstein Award, the Wolf Prize, the Copley Medal, and the Fundamental Physics Prize. The Nobel Prize, however, eluded him. Advertisement he was fond of scientific wagers, despite a knack for losing them. In 1975, he bet the U.S. physicist Kit Thorne a subscription to Penthouse that the cosmic X-ray source Cygnus X-1 was not a black hole. He lost in 1990. In 1997, Hawking and Thorne bet John Preskill an encyclopedia that information must be lost in black holes. Hawking conceded in 2004. In 2012, Hawking lost $100 to Gordon Kane for betting that the Higgs boson would not be discovered. He lectured at the White House during the Clinton administration, his oblique references to the Monica Lewinsky episode were evidently lost on those who screened his speech and returned in 2009 to receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama. His life was played out in biographies and documentaries, most recently The Theory of Everything, in which Eddie Redmayne played him. He appeared on The Simpsons and played poker with Einstein and Newton on Star Trek, The Next Generation. He delivered gorgeous put-downs on the Big Bang Theory. What do Sheldon Cooper and a black hole have in common? Hawking asked the fictional Caltech physicist whose IQ comfortably outstrips his social skills. After a pause, the answer came, they both suck. 
Hawking has argued that for humanity to survive it must spread out into space and has warned against the worst applications of artificial intelligence, including autonomous weapons. Hawking was happy to court controversy and was accused of being sexist and misogynist. He turned up at Stringfellow's lap dancing club in 2003 and years later declared women a complete mystery. In 2013, he boycotted a major conference in Israel on the advice of Palestinian academics. Some of his most outspoken comments offended the religious. In his 2010 book, Grand Design, he declared that God was not needed to set the universe going, and in an interview with The Guardian a year later, dismissed the comforts of religious belief. I regard the brain as a computer which will stop working when its components fail, he said. There is no heaven or afterlife for broken down computers, that is a fairy story for people afraid of the dark. He spoke also of death, an eventuality that sat on a more distant horizon than doctors thought. I'm not afraid of death, but I'm in no hurry to die, he said. I have so much I want to do first. What astounded those around him was how much he did achieve. He leaves his three children, from his first marriage to Jane Wilde, and three grandchildren.